Hi everyone. So today we're going to talk uh, about Keros and the cryptogenic experiment, Dodges and Trial. So basic use case, we have uh, Alice, which wants to add an item to a created list. So here we have a created list of Dodges. So she puts a deposit, then Bob has some time to challenge. And since no one challenge, the item is automatically added to the list and Alice gets her deposit back. But now, if Alice tries to um, add an item which should not belong to the list, so here, a cat, Bob C, uh, this uh, request, challenge it by putting a deposit. An arbitrator is gonna look at the case, so here, is it a dodge or not? Give a ruling, here, well, it's invalid, and then Bob uh, gets the deposit of Alice and gets his deposit back, minus the arbitration fee for the arbitrator. So here we have uh, Alice doing some action which are illegal, and we have anyone which can act as the crypto police uh, challenging uh, illegal action, and get an arbitrator acting as a crypto judge. So we're gonna see the joint trial, that's fun, but in practice, uh, this creation is already important important topic into making uh, dApps. So if you want to make a decentralized eBay, you need to list item and you need to remove item which are violating the chart, which are illegal, like perhaps you don't want the e your eBay to turn into Silk Road, so you want to remove drugs. So <coughs> you need a way to create the content which are gonna be uh, displayed in your dApp. Um, spam, it's also a uh, list creation uh, problem. And a forum post, uh, a forum post, a forum is basically a created list of posts which are not violating the term and condition of this forum. And uh, you want to, you can, this way you can penalize people which will uh, violate the chart either by uh, banning them or uh, by asking them to put an extra deposit uh, if they want to continue interacting in this forum. So for now, we had the arbitrator which uh, could have been uh, anything, any kind of mechanism. Uh, it could be a central arbitrator, it could be a multisig, but that's not really that interesting uh, in terms of crypto economics. But it can also be a DAO, and that's what Kleros is. It's an arbitration DAO. So the, pr the, first, the first idea about Kleros is to do crowdsourced uh, dispute resolution. So we want to tap into a pool uh, of uh, potential jurors, but obviously, we don't draw everyone, because if you draw everyone, either each juror are gonna pay, be paid peanuts, or uh, arbitration fee are gonna be way too expensive. So you want to only draw a subset of them. Then you have a second problem, which arises in most uh, blockchain systems, which is the civil attack. How do you prevent someone like this guy from registering thousands of times and being almost the only one drawn? So we cannot really draw people uh, because otherwise you could just make tons of fake accounts. And uh, as we talked in the previous um, uh, presentation, uh, well, there are some identity system which are being created, but I'd say that none is really production ready to avoid civil attacks. So instead of drawing people, uh, we draw tokens. So here we have uh, parties A to G, which have some token that they deposited and we want uh, five jurors, so we're gonna draw five tokens. So A, C, E, and G are gonna be drawn. And E is quite strange because it's gonna be drawn twice, uh, but you still uh, need to sometimes draw people multiple times, otherwise they will just split their account into multiple accounts to get more chance of being drawn. But that happened uh, because the juror pool is um, small. In a large juror pool, that's quite unlikely to be drawn multiple times. <coughs> Oh, drawn, like randomly drawn, drawn to be a juror. Yeah, by the way, randomly, can I ask that? How do you provide the randomly? So currently, uh, we use uh, the block hash, which is not uh, a perfect uh, random number uh, because of two potential uh, attack, but the attack are not that bad um, because attack cannot fix the random number to a particular value. You cannot say this number is this to make m only myself drawn all the time. Um, the attack are two kinds. One is block withholding. So I'm a miner, when I mine a block, I know the block hash, and I can say, well, I don't really like this block hash, 
is going to lead to my enemies being drawn slightly more than what they should be drawn statistically. So I'm going to discard it. So I'm not going to publish it. I'm just going to put it as an uncle. Yeah. But by doing so, you waive uh, the block reward and all the fees. So that's only the miner which can do that. That's expensive. And that do not fix the number. That just allow to re-roll the number. Or you also have free attacks, which uh, happen when you have two miners uh, which find a block at approximately the same time. And now you have the chain which two head of the um, same length. And at this time, the miner can choose on which one to build because both of them have the same length. And so in, this in these cases, the, the miner has a choice between two potential random numbers. So you have attack on that. But that can just slightly modify the number that cannot reroll it, or uh, that can only reroll it, that cannot fix it to a particular number. Uh, in the future, we're going to use a um, sequential proof of work that now they call a verifiable delay function, but that's still a AVD research topic, and that's, I would say, not ready for now. But if yeah, you're. Yeah. VDF, ver verifiable delay functions. Um, uh, the Restorm Foundation has some uh, research team working on that, and I think that's quite promising. Um, and basically, the idea of v VDF, verifiable data function, is that the random number is fixed at a particular point in time, but at this point, no one knows what it is because it takes a lot of time to compute what it will be. And so this way, you cannot re-roll it because, okay, you can re-roll something, but you don't know what you have. It's like, it's like you throw the dices. Every time you can re-roll the dices if you want, but you can, you can never look at the dices. So being able to re-roll it will not serve you any purpose. But that's not what it's currently used. Uh, that's going to be when they are finished uh, their VDF uh, random beacon. Okay. <coughs> um, yeah, we'll make a whole talk about <laughs> random numbers, <laughs> and I actually did <laughs> at uh, DEFCON 2. Uh, <laughs> so, g going back uh, to Claros, um, so now we have a way to protect against civil attack. We draw jurors by tokens, but now you w we want to avoid jurors to just vote randomly. Because if we don't give any other incentives, they could just vote randomly to uh, get the reward or take bribe uh, in order to uh, increase uh, their earnings. So we cannot really get the truth. We cannot really know if someone is voting correctly or not. The best proxy to the truth that we can have is, is their vote coherent with the other jurors? So a part of the token which are staked are redistributed towards the juror who voted currently. So here we have five jurors on the top uh, who voted uh, reject, two who voted accept. So those who voted accept are losing a small amount of tokens towards those who voted reject. So if you think the others are going to vote honestly, you have to uh, vote honestly. And that's uh, the shilling game. So when you look at this matrix, you can see that voting for Alice or voting for Bob um, that looks the same if you look, just look at the matrix. Uh, if you don't have the label, that's a symmetric matrix, and you could say, well, I can just vote for whatever I want. But in practice, you have the labels, you have Alice and Bob, and you know that uh, Alice tried to, to put a cat into the list. So you're going to say, oh, well, most people are going to reject the cat, so I should reject the cat to vote the same way as other people, and so you should vote uh, for Bob if you expect other people to vote for Bob. And uh, that's uh, recursive. People, you can vote for Bob because you expect people to vote for Bob because you expect them to expect other people to vote for Bob. Uh, they done some uh, experiment like that um, on um, the depth of uh, expectation you have, and people go up to three level in practice. So they vote for what they expect people to expect people to expect people to vote. Not all of them. Like some people just do one level, but the most the strategic goes up to three. <coughs> so that's what we have here. Uh, so in this case, that's for Alice. So that's, let's say that's the first image of the, of the dodge. And you're going to vote for Alice because they all think that the others are going to vote uh, for Alice. Uh, but no, we have a problem which can arise. Is uh, what uh, if uh, we have bribes and we have Bob uh, giving his to a malicious juror, which are going to vote for Bob. In this case, not only they get his, but they also get a uh, token from the last juror who was honest. So that's quite problematic uh, to have bribes. So that's why we have an appeal system where if you believe that the ruling was incorrect because of bribe, you can put an additional stake and it gets appealed uh, so that you have more jurors. So 
at the end of the day, you still have uh, some uh, fixed amount of juror, and you need most of them to be uh, honest. And if most of them are not honest, uh, that's the fifty percent attack. Here we have F and G, uh, which will have most of the tokens. And uh, if they vote dishonestly, we're going to end up with dishonest ruling. Um, and that's already a problematic case. But for F and G, that's a quite costly attack. Because if they do so, they're going to turn Kleros into a court which is giving dishonest ruling. So if it's a court which gives dishonest ruling, people are going to stop using it. If people are going to stop using it, there won't be any dispute. And so they won't have any arbitration fees. So if you have 10% attack, you will um, clearly drop uh, the price of the underlying token. So 15% attack have a cost. So you have uh, a budget, which is the amount of token you need to buy, which can be prohibitive. And you have the cost, which is the value all of your tokens are going to lose if you manage uh, to do this attack. Uh, since we're in this token engineering, we can ask why do we need a token? Because I, I think a lot of projects just put tokens uh, as, I don't know what was the last speaker to do ICOs. Um, well, which is fine, but just uh, sometimes token can, uh, can lead to friction. So we can ask ourselves, what would it be if we are to use um, ETH instead of, uh, instead of PNK? Uh, would, it, would it still work? <coughs> so if we are using ETH and someone will try to 15% attack Leros, uh, that will be easier because they will have less impact on the market because the market of PNK is way smaller than ETH. So if you try to buy 15% of the, of the PNK, you're going to increase the price of PNK a lot. While if you try to do that with ETH, um, you're not going to increase it that much because you don't want to buy 15% of the ETH. You would want to buy 15% of the ETH which are used in uh, this Kleros, uh, which is uh, way easier than buying 15% of the ETH. Um, then if the attack is successful and it was in ETH, at the end of the day, as an attacker, you have a cost of almost zero because Kleros failing will probably not crash its price. While if you have PNK, you crash the PNK price, so you end up with useless tokens. And in terms of recovery, if you have ETH and the court is dishonest, uh, well, you're kind of stuck into a dishonest court. But if you have a specific token, you can have an honest, minor an honest minority, which can force the token, remove the stake of the attacker, and make a new version of Kleros, which will uh, be honest. So all of these are not supposed to happen, but the fact that they could happen act as a deterrent such that it should not happen. Uh, and also, we could do on uh, the other side, why not a lot of tokens? Uh, one token for each application, so like one token for dodge and trial, and one token for uh, a token, token curated list, and one token for an escrow. Um, it's <laughs> because if you have smaller DAOs, uh, that's easier to attack smaller DAOs and larger DAO. You can see that small chain are uh, more easily attacked in uh, proof of work generally. We haven't seen that much proof of stake attack yet. Uh, but small systems are easier to attack uh, compared to larger ones. So it's also good to have a um, large system to make attack uh, budget higher and also coordination higher. Because if you want to fully profit from attacking a large court, you want to profit in all the court use cases. So you need to um, engineer multiple attacks at once to be able to profit from this attack. Otherwise, the amount of uh, the value of your token lost uh, will be way higher than what you can profit uh, in this kind of attack. Uh, so continuing with attack, uh, we have, um, um, oh, no, let's continue with um, shading coin before. <coughs> So at first, I display you a minus one, plus one um, uh, matrix, uh, which was a kind of simplification of, uh, of the matrix. <coughs> In practice, it's quite more complex. Because if you give honest rolling, you're going to slightly increase the price of the token. If you give dishonest rolling, you're going to slightly decrease the price of the token because less people are going to want to use uh, the course in the future. So less dispute, so less arbitration fee, so less uh, arbitration fee per token holder. <coughs> you also have something that we have neglected before, but which is C, which is the connective, the connective cost. So here for dodges, that's quite easy to see if it's a dodge or not, even if we are going to see that in some cases it's not that easy. Um, <coughs> so parties could just vote randomly because they don't want to spend the cognitive cost uh, to find out uh, what is the honest answer to a case. So we can end up in three different Nash equilibrium. 
So a Nash equilibrium is a set of strategy such that no actor has some um, interest into changing his strategy if the other actor were to keep the strategy. So if everyone is being honest, as an individual actor, you should be honest because if you become dishonest, uh, you're going to lose your token and that's bad for you. But if everyone is dishonest, you should also stay dishonest because if you start being honest, the ruling are still going to be dishonest and not only your token, the token price is decreasing, but then your token amount will also decrease because you won't be in the majority. And if everyone is voting randomly, the Nash equilibrium again is to vote randomly because if you vote randomly, no matter uh, what, um, uh, what you do, you still have one chance out of two of being the majority if everyone is voting randomly. So let's use better not to spend the cognitive cost. So you should not look at any, at any evidence and just put a bot voting randomly. We want to stay in the honest uh, equilibrium. Uh, and uh, that's quite important to start a system which are in this honest equilibrium. And Dogegian trial was uh, an experiment, but also a way to start the system on funny use cases where we have a Nash equilibrium, which is honesty, um, to after add more complex uh, cases. So now we're going to go full on the Dogegian trial. Uh, and there is still a reward of two is uh, for people who managed to put a cat on the Dogegian trial. So we, we gave you some um, preloaded wallet with some ETH and PNK. So you can either challenge um, cats to get the reward of the poster, or you can try to put cats to eventually get the two ETH if uh, you manage to get your cat added to the list. Um, so we, get, we got people trying to get uh, those rewards. Um, generally, they first tried to just write on uh, the image that they would uh, give ETH to people voting uh, for their cats. Um, so this one was by Tristan. Uh, it has been quite unsuccessful um, because Juror had um, no proof that they would be paid uh, this amount of ETH. And Tristan also had people who came to him, asked for the bribe, and those people were not even Jurors. So they tried to scam the scammers, <laughs> and <laughs> it was a bit fun. Um, <clears throat> Then uh, someone made a slightly more advanced attack where they put the link to an address stating they had a budget, even if nothing proved that it's their address, uh, they could have made a signature at least uh, to prove that it's their address. Um, and so um, people tried a um, quite naive way uh, to bribe jurors. Uh, but I guess that in a more complex adversarial setting, we may see more complex uh, attacks. Uh, including uh, this uh, famous uh, P-perception attack. So the idea of the P-perception attack is <coughs> we want uh, here, uh, as an attacker, to have Bob winning the dispute. Um, oh, sorry, no, sorry. As an attacker, we want Alice uh, to win the dispute. So if you vote Alice and the majority vote Alice, you're going to get token because you're coherent. But if you vote Bob, you're going to lose some. Now, as an attacker, we want to change this matrix so that the jurors are always better or equal voting Alice. So to do so, if they vote Alice and uh, Bob wins, the attacker gives a few amount of ETH, which is enough to offset uh, the lost token and also give uh, a slight um, uh, extra to the juror which got bribed. So now you can say, okay, if I vote Alice and everyone vote Alice, I get Swan. If I vote Bob and the other do not uh, vote for Bob, I'm going to lose one, but I'm going to get 2.01 from the attacker. So this way, you're always better uh, voting for um, uh, what uh, the attacker uh, asks you to vote. And the real uh, magic or danger of this attack is that if it's successful, if everyone votes Alice, the attacker does not have anything to pay. So the attacker only pays when the attack fails. So you need a high uh, budget, but if it's successful, uh, you have a zero cost. <coughs> so that's when we only look juror per juror, but now if uh, all the jurors look together, the best way for them is to accept bribe 
but still slightly less than what would be enough to have a ruling uh, for the attacker, because if they have a ruling for the attacker, they don't get bribes. They only get bribes when it's the attack phase. So the juror could uh, coordinate to only accept a few bribes, or have other mechanism to vote randomly, or you can have some party of the juror which are gonna just be honest anyway, um, and a small party getting um, the bribes. And that's why this attack, uh, even if in theory, uh, sounds quite interesting. Uh, in practice, um, when uh, we tried it ourselves, uh, we never managed to uh, turn a ruling uh, into having a cat accepted. Uh, you can see, we, if, when you look at the list, you will see a lot of uh, uh, submission with uh, this uh, fat cat, uh, where that was the perception attack uh, that we tried uh, on our own system. And those attacks were backed by smart contracts. So that means that the juror uh, could be guaranteed to be paid the bribe uh, when the attack uh, failed. So some juror have been pre bribed, but the attack still failed. No, um, it was a smart contract, uh, which looks at uh, the votes. And uh, if this does not result into accepted, pay the juror which voted uh, for accepted. And that's a smart contract, the if was in it, so juror can be guaranteed that the attack will work. So we also had a um, smart contract with uh, just paying a simple bribe um, but the most uh, efficient, if you can call it efficient because attack still failed, uh, was using people perception attack where in, at some point we managed to get 25% of the juror accepting bribes uh, in those attacks, but never uh, succeeding the attack. <coughs> so a few other interesting uh, things which happened in uh, the giant trial is that we found out uh, that the juror tend to look at the intention of the posters, uh, because in the rule, what it was just, is it a dodge picture? It was not asking if there were a cat in it, and the payout for the cat is when there is only a cat and no dodge on it, but a lot of jurors may not have noticed that. And so, also a lot of posters may not have noticed that and posted picture of both cat and dodge at the same time to try to get the ease, even if they would not have been eligible. Uh, but the jurors, they found out uh, that there, this was malicious behavior and still rejected this picture. Uh, while when you had the picture of a dodge with another animal or more with another man animal, uh, it tend to uh, have been accepted. So like, uh, I don't even know what we call that. Uh, just before, like before people, be before they become butterfly. What's that? What? Be before it's a butterfly? What is it? Oh, caterpillar, yeah, yeah. So like a caterpillar dodge, it's okay. Uh, but uh, a cat feeling like a dodge or a cat in a dodge, it's not okay for the jurors. Um, we also had some this, this interesting images of dodges, but not dodges in the way most people thought about it. In July or August, I think. Yeah, yeah, that was quite in the beginning uh, where we had dodges of Venice. Uh, and first it got posted uh, just as an image and it got rejected. So either juror did not find it was a dodge or they found it was a dodge, but concluded that most of the other jurors uh, won't be able to recognize this as a dodge, and so they rejected it. Uh, but when, uh, with a proper label, it got accepted. Um, but some other dodge, uh, which was just believed to be a dodge, so this uh, dodge is a dodge in a in legend, so it's not an historical dodge, why uh, Leonardo is a uh, Dodge, which is uh, uh, in history books, and uh, everyone is quite certain he, he existed, but not uh, Paolo. Uh, so Paolo got rejected, uh, and Leonardo got accepted only with a proper label. And so here we can see that even with simple questions, is it a dodge, we end up at uh, some fuzzy cases uh, where you could not really predict uh, if uh, it will be accepted or rejected. And we think we're always going to have uh, a bit of um, subjectivity in ruling. And trying to remove subjectivity uh, are going to just end up into having subjectivity on the question, is this question subjective? And uh, if people have been following Augur, uh, they got a lot of dispute on that because they say, oh, we don't want dispute. We, just, we don't want complex cases. We just say question should be objective. And then 
they have the question is, was this question objective or not? So <laughs> that's just some kind of meta uh, subjectivity problem which arise if you try to ban subjectivity. Uh, convergence, <coughs> uh, when we got uh, dogs uh, which were really looking like dodges, but not technically Shiba Inu, but related uh, races. Um, at first, uh, they try to be accepted and rejected, and then it converged toward accepting them. So we can see that we had some kind of emergence of case law, where Jura would have looked at the list, see, oh, okay, like a uh, dog which, which are already close to, dodge, to Shiba Inu uh, are considered dodges, and then uh, they, con they constantly uh, accepted uh, dodge like that why it was not the case at the beginning. We also saw that overall, jurors tend to be way more lenient as the experiment, um, uh, at the end of the experiment than at the beginning. At the beginning, sometimes, even if it was a dodge, but not a perfect Shiba Inu, it got rejected. Uh, but at the end, it converged to approximately everything which does not look malicious and is related to dodges have to be accepted. And uh, the failure cases. So the two uh, cats which got accepted. Uh, so this one, do you know what it is? Is it, for, is it a cat or is it a dodge? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a cat, but no one noticed it was a cat. So Agusimeter had to uh, give us a picture from the other side to convince us it was effectively a cat <laughs> and not a dodge. Uh, so that was the first cat uh, which managed to get into the list. And the other one, even if obviously a cat, uh, it's just that at some point no one challenged it. So <coughs> that's, that's, that's quite interesting because the failure cases, one was uh, in a case uh, where it was really hard to determine the truth. And the other one <coughs> uh, was just, um, it was not worse anymore to look at the Gen trial every day to try to get a reward from uh, spotting malicious cats. Uh, so people st stopped doing it on a daily basis and then someone took advantage uh, and got uh, a cat like that. So even if you say, okay, everyone uh, is a crypto police and can challenge uh, images, uh, sometimes you just have no police around. Um, but that can be still fine because you always gonna end up into an equilibrium where you have crime being committed um, but uh, you, oh, sorry, crime being committed, but you will never have uh, zero crime because if you have zero crime, you have no incentive to watch for crime. So no one is watching for crime. So if no one is watching for crime, you have some incentive to commit crime because you won't get caught. So you cannot uh, get zero crime. Uh, so that's still something that you have to accept that once in a while uh, system uh, depending on human uh, are gonna fail. Uh, and we can make them <laughs> fail more or less, depending on the uh, reward given to the crypto police. Um, but even with a really large reward, we still have uh, some failure case once in a while. Uh, so that was all for um, the presentation. So I'm gonna take a few questions, and after that we go on uh, using the GN trial. Uh, any question? Yeah. activity of the jurors, just what you mentioned um, right now, that have you, have you um, implemented or are there any ideas how to push activity of jurors in certain cases or is it really this one, like okay, there's, there's a certain uh, amount of money you have to uh, invest if you challenge, uh, no, if you have a dispute and this amount is always the same, and it's just then you hope for active jurors, or, or is it a supply and demand equilibrium? So it's not really supply and demand equilibrium, it's uh, more like a DAO. Mm -hmm. So since for now you just have one Kleros and not really uh, operational competitors, uh, that's some kind of dispute resolution monopoly, let's say, you're at least on dodges. Uh, <coughs> But uh, once uh, there are more competitors, uh, there will be a fee uh, which will be modifiable through governance uh, on uh, Claro. So really as, as a DAO where you can make a proposal to change the fee uh, if you want to increase or, uh, or lower fees. But it's uh, not up to the person? No, it's, it's, not, it's not by person. Um, it's uh, on uh, the subcourt. Subcourt have different uh, amount uh, paid uh, per juror. 
but when you stake, you choose on which uh, subcore to, to stake. Uh, for now, you just have the giant trial, uh, but next month you'll have uh, other subcourts with uh, other kind of payouts, uh, which can be uh, greater because here it's one cent of ETH per juror because it's a really easy task most of the time. Uh, but on more complex disputes, uh, one cent of ETH would not be enough. Um, but for now, that's, there is no supply and demand of that. That's governance per parameter. Yeah. We, we can, yeah, yes. um, I just missed a bit of the context. How long has the project? Oh, there. Okay. Yeah. How long has the project been running? Actually, uh, I think it's running since August. So quite a lot. We got one thousand and a few hundred images accepted, and between one and two hundred of uh, rejected images. And how many uh, unique wallet IDs? Uh, or I don't know this. I don't know this, but you may be able to find that on state okay. of the dApps. Sure. Cool project, thanks. Yeah. What about future use? Hi. Um, what about future use cases you're looking into, or what, what would be the next steps if this is successful? So, on um, still a list creation, uh, we're going to have uh, next month. Uh, the token token curated list, which is a curated list of tokens with uh, their name, their network address, their ticker, and uh, their uh, symbol um, to be used by uh, exchanges or wallet uh, which want to, to pull a list of uh, those tokens. Because for now, it's either done by uh, centralized parties or when uh, they just list everything, you get uh, scammers which put fake tokens. So we got someone making a fake PNK and selling for $500 uh, worth of uh, fake PNK uh, to uh, other people. <coughs> so still that, that in the crypto space, uh, and uh, um, in uh, still dispute, but in this time not a list creation, uh, we're gonna have uh, Oracle disputes, um, <coughs> where you can have some question like uh, who won um, the Olympic game of uh, this year, um, and people can answer this question, and if they don't agree on the answer, they can raise a dispute and juror can uh, vote uh, on uh, who won to the Olympic Games. Um, and this oracle is then to be used by other dApps, either insurance or prediction markets. Uh, so this is connecting with uh, some other already existent uh, app, which is a real issue, uh, which for now have just uh, themselves as a centralized arbitrator. So we're going to have Claros as a decentralized arbitrator on the oracle. Uh, and then uh, we have um, the escrow system where you can uh, buy and sell uh, goods or services, so like domain name or make, paying someone to make a website. Uh, and if you don't uh, trust them, you can have the fund being kept in escrow. And um, if there is a problem, you can make a dispute and the winner of the dispute can get the fund. And if there is no problem, the buyer can just sign and the seller get paid. So that's uh, what is planned on uh, the short term. So I'd say uh, in, uh, in months is uh, uh, one, two, two, or three months for most of them. So we already see Claros as a dispute resolution system, and on those like the main use cases of dispute resolution are list creation, uh, escrow, so where should the money go, and Oracle uh, getting some uh, value which are not accessible on chain, uh, but required for other contracts uh, to execute properly, like insurance or prediction markets. Oh, to raise a dispute, you pay arbitration fee. So that's really uh, two-sided. So on one, on one hand, you have uh, the arbitrator. So here, Kleros is an arbitrator. You also have a centralized arbitrator, where you use someone holding the key, which can be ruling. And you can plug any uh, app to one or the other. Uh, and on the other side, you have the arbitrable uh, contracts, which decides of uh, the fee structure. So in the joint trial, you have some fees going to the juror, but you also have some deposit which uh, is going uh, to the challenger if the challenge is successful, or uh, to the requester, if from the challenger to the requester if the challenge is not successful. Uh, so you have uh, another part, and we have uh, standardized the interaction between arbitrator and arbitrable contract, mm -hmm. so that when you make uh, an arbitrable uh, adapt, you can plug it to any arbitrator uh, adapt. So in, for now, either Kleros or uh, a central arbitrator. And so, is end user, um, 
they don't need to, to deal uh, with PNK or to Claro. They just they raise dispute, um, but they don't really need to understand or participate, except when providing evidence, to uh, the intrinsic complexity which may be at the arbitrator uh, part. Um, any last question? Last question? So in what's current deployed, there is only one court, but in uh, the version which are going to be released next month, uh, you're going to have a court hierarchy. Yeah. So court being increasingly, increasingly specialized. So you could have like a crypto court in which have a child which would be a token court, or you could have like a meme court which would have a child which would be a dozen trial, and another child which would be some other uh, meme or artistic use case. Um, <coughs> So that when you stake into one court, you also stake in all the court of this path. So if you stake on Dodge and Trial, you also stake on the meme court, and you also stake on the general court. Um, but you get in priority uh, disputes uh, which are related to the court you staked. But if there are too much appeal, uh, and there is not enough juror in this court, the dispute can jump courts. <coughs> 